Hey guys, welcome back to Dirt Gear TV. Look what I got to show you. Boom. We got an engine, boys. After many months of delays, here she is in all her glory. Show you guys the under carcage. They did need to notch. Let me see if you guys can see this. They had to notch, yeah, you can see it right there. The sides, how they had to notch that. That was because the aftermarket rods were making contact with the block. He says he notched it pretty good, which I can see that he did, and we just can't really tell how much clearance there is. So everything is in. These are the 10 millimeters caps. I'm really hoping that I don't bust these caps. I mean, they look like they're pretty thick to me, but I know Greg over on the Car Passion channel recently blew up one of his Miata engines, and what it was is his main caps all broke. We've never seen that before. I'm not really sure how much power these will hold. They ought to hold the three to 400 that I've got going into this thing, but that's my final concern would be if these were to break or if I were to lift the head. Those would be the two most detrimental things to this build. So that's it, we finally got an engine. After months and months and months and months. I don't even remember when I took this thing apart. I think I started this back in October of last year. So October, November, December, January. Six and a half hours late. May, and now we're going to June. So eight months. Yes, the build is painful. The reason why I'm not really thinking about doing a cost video is mainly because this thing started out as like a budget build. $450 is what I paid for this engine originally. For most of you guys, and I'm talking about the automotive guys, I'm talking about the guys that are building cars. The amount of money that you will put into this engine to do what I did, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But let's put it this way. You could build a 4G63 and for what it would cost you to build a thousand horsepower 4G63, I've got basically a four to 500 horsepower 3A92. Now the big difference there is this is gonna weigh half as much. So for me, where I'm trying to keep 900 pounds, I'm trying to keep 1,000 pounds in the dune buggy, for a guy like me, it makes a little bit more sense to get crazy and to start going into this kind of extreme build. But now we know what it takes to build a three to four to 500 horsepower 3A92. Now, of course, I still have to build the rest of the engine. So we're gonna build this engine together. We're gonna do it really fast because this whole thing's gotta go back together and I've got about a week so I can get ready for Durham Town. My word. These are the little bucket spacers. They're shimless buckets that go into the head. Um, but I can't continue with the engine build until I get the head buttoned up because the head needs to go on so I can start doing the timing chain. So, um, I'm gonna get the head up here and we'll get the buckets and the valve latch set so I can get the head on the engine and get this thing rocking. Factory specs on this are nine thousandths on the intake and twelve thousandths on the exhaust. Those are the factory specs for you performance guys if you're running boost like I am. I don't know that I would recommend the factory specs, but I don't have any better specs to go by. So we're gonna use the factory specs, which should get me very close.
Okay, so final clearances, starting with the back exhaust, we have 12, 12, 13, 10, 11, and 10. Remember, we're supposed to have 12 there, so we're very close there. On the back, we have a 10, an 8, and remember, these are supposed to be 9, so a 10 and an 8, that average is 9, right? A 9, a 10 slash 11, an 11 and a 10. So that's really very close and that's going to be just fine. Now these are two different oil control solenoids that I have. You can see the cutouts are a lot different. See on that side and they're also different on that side. So I'm going to use the original. But now is the fun part. We get to actually put the head on this thing. This is, in my opinion, the most fun with building the engine is actually seeing the head go back on the engine and then we gotta time everything. I've been waiting to break this thing out for eight months. Now, this is a single layer steel head gasket. Um, they do have tiny little fire rings here in the head gasket and unfortunately this is our only option unless of course you do want to have one custom made that would work but this is what we're using. Now these are the ARPs. These are out of a Honda L15. I think I told you guys previously we're using the same ones here as the Honda. about a three cylinder is when you buy other parts that are not meant for this engine, you always get spares. This is why I did not go up to even larger head studs. The bolts that hold the head studs on, that hold the head on, do not fit within the head. I can do one of two things. I can either, I can trim this little piece down here just a smidge so they fit down in there, or I can try to drop the head on while having those bolts go in at the same time. I'm gonna see how difficult that looks like it's going to be. Oh, be very careful when you're doing this. Um, all it takes is one of these going, poking into that head surface to ruin the head. So let me see what size these are. 11 millimeter. If the 11 was too wide, which it is, I knew the 12 was gonna be way too wide. You wouldn't believe what I found. And this is one of the, I think gonna be the first small victories I've had. This 11, which I think is a Harbor Freight, is too wide to fit down in that head. Look at how narrow these cheap Chinese cobalt tools. This is the Chinese cobalt, look at that. What I was gonna do is I was actually gonna put this on a chop saw and turn that whole thing down to get the 11 to fit. So it is very likely that this might fit down in the engine without any additional modification. If that's the case, I won't even believe it because everything on this project has been going wrong. So I could really use one win, one victory, and it doesn't fit. Frick, not even close. I'm gonna try to turn this thing down just a smidge and hope that it's strong enough to take that kind of torque. But I may end up sacrificing this tool, so let me get over here on the chop saw and get to chopping. So sometimes you just gotta make your own tools. Now I hate to butcher a brand new tool like that, but it's an 11. Yes, it works. Ooh, just barely. looking to compare number one this one's going to get tightened the way that this head is supposed to get tightened because I have the eight bolts instead of the ten that you would see in a four-cylinder engine and they are calling for so I've got 50 pounds from the 
um, L15 recommended stud kit that's in the engine and then I've also got this which is a 52 pound. With that in mind I'm going to put 52 pounds on this as called for with the Can-Am engines because really this engine is so similar to these Can-Ams. So they're talking about an initial 28 foot-pounds, 45 pounds, and then confirming 52 pounds three more times. into that one so that might be the trick is just blast right into 52 don't do it slowly just hammer down here we go oh, man. they will settle in and if I were to wait till tomorrow I'd probably get it another pound or two into them but I just don't have that kind of time it is now 6:30, so this has been sitting for about 90 minutes Really, that should be enough. This whole setup is now the highest horsepower 3A92 build that is even theoretically possible. The main reason for that is these nine millimeter head studs are the maximum that are going to be able to fit down into the engine. So the limitation to this build is only going to be how much force will lift that head. By my calculations and also by what other engine builders are getting out of similar sized engines with similar sized rods with similar sized torque on the head, they're getting about 350 horsepower. If you went to a 10 millimeter stud, you would have to take off so much material in between where those two bucket spacing is. Now, if you guys remember, the mains that I'm running, I am using an ARP 2000 um, 10 millimeter. So let me show you the difference. Here's the nine millimeter bolt. This is the 10 millimeter bolt. So we're not talking about a small difference we're talking about an absolutely gigantic difference between the 10 bolt, the 10 millimeter and the nine millimeter. So really the limiting factor is this guy right there. That being said, there's a whole lot of fun we can have with 350 horsepower in a 900 pound vehicle. show you guys the timing marks on this. That blue mark, and this should be in the center, not off to the sides, but dead center of that length should be the timing mark there. Then we'll have one at the top that correlates to the vertical timing mark there, which means we need one on the side here. Facing in, we have it. We got one facing in here, and this one facing the top link. So these links also match up. So that is how you time the 3A92, and now she's actually starting to look like a real engine. All right, I got a thin bead of ultra black all the way around. Get our oil pump cover into place. just a conventional 30-way boil. That would be my first choice. That's what I want to use to break this engine in. 
This was the second choice because Walmart here locally is completely sold out of every bottle of conventional oil. The only thing on the shelf is synthetic and synthetic blend. Also, I found the cheapest filter I could. The way that I'm going to be breaking this engine in is I'm going to be running this for just a very short duration. It's just a run-in. The reason for using a conventional oil initially is we actually want a little bit of friction to help seat those rings in and make those two surfaces together. Remember, all of the metal to metal contact that's happening throughout the whole engine, the new crank surfaces, the bearings, the caps, the cam caps, the, the engine rings, all of that, that all has to mate in together and those two surfaces have to come together and smooth out any peaks and valleys. In fact, Webcam, who made, who made the cam for this, knowing that this is a flat tappet cam, they still recommend using a conventional oil to break in the camshaft and not a synthetic. So I'm gonna take their word as well as the word of many of the professionals after the first Time the engine has been completely flushed of its fluids. This is the oil that's actually going to stay inside this engine for more than an hour. Um, so this is really going to be the break-in oil. Um, of course, this will run with synthetic and a high zinc content for the rest of its life because of the flat tappet cam. But just to get going, we're using the cheap stuff.